Continuing with our product costing presentations, let's look at goods receipt. So what happens in the goods receipt process? So we created the purchase order. So we have submitted the purchase order to the vendor saying that we want to purchase these materials, this amount of quantities at this particular price to be delivered on these dates. So the purchase order has been given to the vendor. Now the vendor has delivered the items, which means we are receiving the materials from the vendor the day you receive the goods. The receiving of the goods is called goods receipt. So we are receiving the goods from the vendor. So we are having a movement in our inventory. So our stocks are going up or the inventory levels of our materials are increasing because we are receiving new stocks from the vendor. So this is a financial transaction because we are receiving goods. So in your balance sheet side, the inventory amounts will increase because you are receiving new inventory. So And this is a financial transaction which will affect your company code and your GL accounts. Now what happens in the controlling module? Remember earlier in our purchase order when I mentioned that when you create purchase order, it will be at the commitment stage. Now because it's going to be a financial transaction, it will move from commitment to actuals. So in the CO modules, when you run your reports for your internal orders or WBS, you will see that your CO module, it will move from your commitments to your actuals. Even if you run your cost center reports, you will see now the values will be in your actual section. So what is the double entry happening or what is the financial entry happening? The inventory account or your stock account will get debited. Because that's what happens because your balance sheet on the asset side, it increases. So your inventory account gets debited and you have an offsetting account called GRIR, clearing account credit. So this GRIR clearing account gets credited. So what is GRIR stands for goods receipt and invoice receipt. So this G or invoice received. This GRIR clearing account will get credited. So this is a standard double entry in SAP. So you get the inventory account debit, GRIR account credit during goods receipt. Then the next stage is when you're actually getting the invoice from the vendor. So at that stage, the GRIR clearing account gets debited and the vendor account gets credited. So that GRIR account debit over here and the credit over here will get offset. So that's what happens to the GRIR clearing account and you run a clearing process also to clear that. So that's in the next stage. We look at that later. Uh, that's for invoice receipt. But now remember for goods receipt, invoice, inventory account or your stock account, if it's just going to be an expense created in your PO, that might be your expense account. These all the accounts will get debited and the GRIR clearing account gets credited. So that's what's happened in the goods receipt process. So now let's now do a setting for the goods receipt and we'll perform the goods receipt for our purchase order. Another important transaction which I did not mention earlier in the purchasing of materials is the purchase info record. The purchase info record, imagine it's like a little bit a set of mass data or a combination of data which will help you at the time of creating purchase orders. Now it's important that you maintain a set of purchase info records because it will help easier when you try to purchase a lot of materials from the same vendor because it will pre or pre or what you say automatically will fill up the necessary data beforehand. This will be quite useful when you do large amounts of procurement. So this purchase info record must be maintained before you perform all the goods receipt process. So to create a purchase info record, you the transaction code for that is ME11 or ME11. Now here I'm going to enter the combination of the vendor and the material and the relevant information to ensure that I have a purchase information record. Sometimes it's called an information record as well. And by default, it's a standard category, but you can have some other categories as well. For our presentation for the controlling module, we'll use everything as the standard category. So I'm going to specify my vendor ID, that is a, for my raw materials. And I'm going to put a raw material number ID here as well. That's my first material for the flour, two kilogram of flour. Purchasing org, I'm going to type that in the ZP02 plant, that's all. You don't specify the info record over here. Press enter to continue and you can see you get all this information where you can specify for that particular combination of vendor and material and the plant information. 
So it's up to you whether you want to specify everything. I'm just going to leave everything blank over here. It also shows about this conversion unit, order unit, and so on from when it is available from this particular vendor, supply option doll. Now this is very important from a procurement point of view, and it's all this and it's maintained by the logistics consultant. I'm just showing you because we have to create all our purchase orders, then we have to do our goods receipt to to do all those transactions.